This is the TJ Hoisington Podcast. Unleash your greatness within. Hey there, I'm super excited. My brother, who is a leader in Legal Shield, asked if I would come on to his weekly team meeting call and share some principles around success. And so I thought I would share some principles around mastering your productivity. I hope you enjoy it. And let me tell you something. What a great group and what a great company. Go check it out. Legal Shield. Here we go. You already know. My passion and my mission to help you unleash your greatness within. My heart goes out to the underdogs. That, that's on their way. If you think you can, go from good to great. Okay, let's motivate. Greatnesswithin.com. Oh. Jay Hoisington. Greatnesswithin.com. Having said that, I'm going to get out of the way. I, uh, I do talk to this gentleman like almost every day. I mean, like I said, whether texting, talking, what have you, he doesn't live far from me. He's been my best friend forever, as long as I can remember, because we used to share a bunk bed. Can you believe it? We were, bro- we're brothers, 13 months apart, but he's had a tremendous amount of success in the personal development arena. And many of you have read his book. Many of you don't know about his book. He wrote a book called If You Think You Can, and it's a best-selling book. And uh, he's actually one of the top corporate trainers in the country. And uh, he's just uh, just a great guy. So with that, I asked TJ to come on and share some thoughts and principles. What would he share to our team to help us have the biggest momentum in the summertime? So TJ, great. TJ Hoisington, I'm going to turn it over to you, brother. I got to tell you to unmute yourself. Bro. Okay, All we're right. good. We're good. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole. I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. It matters not how straight the gate how charged with punishments the scroll i am the master of my fate i am the captain of my soul listen each one of you has greatness within and my goal anytime i meet with a group is hopefully leave something of inspiration or practical that you could use to help you unleash more of that greatness it's not an issue of if you have greatness If you have talents, if you have potential, it's about discovering what's already there. And unfortunately, many people go to their graves with their music still in them. And hopefully today, as I share a message about mastering your productivity, I want to talk to you given that at the time of the year, but this would matter anytime. What are nine steps that can help you be more productive in your day? So I hope you have a pen ready or some way. I know that we're going to record this, so feel free to listen to it and make notes later. But here are my nine principles of productivity. Number one, stop waiting to feel certain before taking action. Let me say that again. Stop waiting to feel certain before you take action. Here's the golden rule of confidence. Most people wait till they feel motivated or feel confident before they actually take action. That doesn't work. The golden rule is this. If you will first take action, if you'll first take that small step, right? And you take that step, the feelings of confidence will come. When you separate the high achievers from the low achievers, you see a pattern that high achievers have the ability to disassociate for a moment long enough for them to take the risk, to take the leap. Now, they're not doing it blindfully. I'm not talking about blind optimism here. Um, They have a plan in place. They have a strategy in place, which all of you do with your business already. That's already in place. You don't have to prove any of that stuff. Really, for you, it's just about taking those steps and doing the things you fear. And as Mark Twain once said, if you do the thing you fear, the thing you fear will dissipate. That's number one. Number two, chuck down action items and tasks into small action items. Chuck it down. Listen, Steve mentioned that I wrote my first book in 2004, 2005 called If You Think You Can. That book, my back was such, many of you know my story. My back was against the wall. Uh, We had had a car repossessed at the time. I was living in my parents' basement. My wife says, you should probably go get a job. I said, well, I'll do that after I exhaust every idea that I had to make the business work. 
And the last idea that I had been procrastinating was writing a book. But after I'd almost lost everything, um, I told my wife I was going to go write a book. And she said, are you crazy? You're going to go write a book? And I did. And within two months, sitting in the back seat of that car in a grocery store parking lot, this book was published. So that took two months. My back was against the wall. Motivation was on me. I had to get it done. I had spent five years teaching many of the principles, so it came quickly. But later, I wrote a book called Swiss Family Robinson, right? It's the first, if you go to Wikipedia right now, Swiss Family Robinson, this book, Return to Robinson Island is the title. This book is listed the first sequel in a hundred years. My name's on Wikipedia for Swiss Family Robinson. You can check it out. But this book took me two years. The only way I was able to get this book done was piece by piece. It was about chunking it down. And so, and that's the way you take a big goal and you achieve it. You chunk it down. And then I wrote a book with my daughter who started at 11 years old. That took a year to write. And you know what? We chunked it down. When... When you do too much at once, it's easy to get overwhelmed. And then we end up quitting on the goal altogether oftentimes. But if you chunk it down and trust the law of the harvest, and the law of the harvest basically says you, you'll sow what you reap and you reap what you sow. That's law number one. So that means if you plant enough seeds, even if they're tiny seeds, eventually they're gonna end up, you're gonna end up having a harvest. Well, what's law number two of the law of the harvest? The law of the harvest says, number two, increased returns, which means you get more than you bargained for. If you plant a seed, you get a huge tree in return. But here's the tough thing, and this is what requires faith, is when you plant the seed or you take the small action, you have to trust that that action that you're going to take, as long as you're consistent, that eventually that will bear fruit. Here's what I have found through coaching all these years, over two decades of coaching. Many people don't hang on long enough to see the fruition of their goals. You have to stick it through and all of a sudden doors will open and opportunities will show up out of nowhere and you won't realize it's the 10,000 hour rule that Malcolm Gladwell talked about in his book, Outliers, which is every expert out there, every professional athlete out there has spent roughly 10,000 hours in practice before they made the big time, if you will. And you know what? You can do the same thing, but you got to be consistent and you have to trust the unknown during the process. Chunk it down and be okay with taking small steps. I always think in my mind, take 30 small steps and then take a huge step right? Don't always take small steps. Sometimes you got to shake up the gears and you got to take a big step. You got to, you got to step out of that comfort zone and realize you're more capable than you think you are. Okay. That's number two. Sorry. Don't get me. Go Listen, I'll get going on this stuff. Okay. Number three, productivity comes down to focus. So there are two areas of focus that you can put as a little A and a B here. A Determine what is most important. What are your priorities? What are your values? And then make sure those are clear. Many people, as Zig Ziglar once said, are wandering generalities or a leaf in the windstorm because they're not precise. They're not focused. They're not clear. I wrote on the side of this piece of paper, Tony Robbins taught me when I used to work with him over 20 years ago, he would always say, a man with one, or a woman, doesn't matter. A man or a woman with one watch always knows what time it is. But a person with two watches is never quite sure. So remember this, um, a jack of all trades is a master of none. Get focused, know your priorities. And B, the second part of that is in terms of focus is you've got to manage and eliminate your distractions. Um, you guys are all self-business owners and so forth. Um, hey, you gotta manage your distractions. There's a lot of distractions in this world. You gotta manage your social media. You gotta manage uh, the news intake. You've gotta manage uh, the people that ping you all through the day. 
And although we want to be helpful to people and we want to be a servant leader, what we really want to move toward is mutual help, not just service all the time without taking time out for our own values, needs, and wants. It's a balance. That's a paradox. And what I see with a lot of leaders is that they are so helpful, right? If there was a paradox and you had one trait called helpful and you had another trait up the side that said assertive, which the definition for this would be to put forward my own needs and wants, what you see in a lot of leaders, and it's not effective, is that there may be a 10 on helpfulness, but only a two or a three on assertiveness or, or taking time out, putting your own needs and wants first. And here's what I find. You have leaders and workers inside companies, this is what I see, that go home exhausted every night. And I'll say, do you leave two or three or four or five things on your desk that aren't accomplished every day? And those leaders will tell me without batting an eyelash, every day they go home with things not done. Why? Because they're constantly helping everybody else out. So I teach leaders to do this. That's great that you want to be a servant leader. But as Jim Rohn would once say, self-sacrifice is not noble. Self-improvement is noble. Okay, so here's what I ask people to do. I say, hey, listen, this has to do with distractions. Next time someone comes to you and says, hey, I need your help on this, I would I tell leaders to do this. I'm happy to help you with that. But here's what I suggest you do. You do parts A, B, and C, and then call me back and I'll help you with D. What you're doing in that moment is you're teaching people, other people, to become self-reliant. You're tell, to helping other people take more ownership for their own work. And that's where good leaders help people. They encourage them, they acknowledge them, they train them, train them, they give them the tools, but then they set people free by having them hold themselves accountable. Okay, so productivity, that was focus. And two things are know your priorities and manage your distractions. Don't just let people come up and take your energy away all the time where you won't get stuff done. Number four, where possible, block out time to complete tasks. Listen, if you have a sweet spot that works for you, when you tend to do really well and it's comfortable to make those phone calls, maybe there's a three hour block in your day, then block out all your distractions or maybe for someone like me, it's blocking out a certain time every day when I write and I focus and I block everything out so that I can be really effective. We all have areas where we're most effective. I know where I'm most effective. When I'm on a run, when I'm running, I'm in a, a place where I'm not usually distracted. I'm in my zone trying to keep my legs moving. <laughs> and then number two, I find that I'm re very effective on an airplane, right? Because I'm limited on where I can go and what I can do. So I tend to get a lot done. Or when I'm in the car, oftentimes great, I'm a content creator. So a lot of times great ideas will come to me when I'm in the car. So I make sure I'm effective by always carrying with me some form of a recorder. So I capture those ideas. All right. So block out the time to complete tasks. Number five, and I love this. And it was stated, I took this from Mel Robbins, New York Times bestselling author. I love that she said this. Quote, own your mornings. Own your mornings. So one way to set up a successful day every day is to get up and be effective when you get up. So what that is, I don't know for you, but you've got to get into a routine, a rhythm that helps you become effective. And if you can start your day off right, hey, you'll be better off throughout the day. Number six. Write down your goals. If I were to take you back to all the classic books written on personal development, on goals, on biographies, on um, Carnegie and Ford and others, I tell you what, one thing you would see that they all teach, whether you re read the book Magic of Believing or As a Man Thinketh or Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, they all say the same thing and it hasn't changed even with all the digital devices that we have. Write your goals down. 
I didn't say put it in your phone. I'll tell you right now, if I could show you my phone right now, you would see over 7,000 notes. Yes, I document in my phone, but anything of value or setting a goal or a task that you want to achieve, write it down on a piece of paper. There's something magical that happens when you write something down, even if you put it aside and you don't look at it, I don't suggest that, but if you did do that, there's a high chance you will have accomplished that goal. I made a list 20 years ago of goals that I wanted to accomplish. I lost the envelope that I put that in. And 15 years later, I found that envelope, opened it up. To my surprise, I had achieved 90% of the goals on that list. There is something to be said for writing things down at the neural, you know, the neural level and the habitual level and really burning it into the mind is really powerful when you write it down. Number seven, develop a strong vision for your life or your business or both, better yet, both. A strong vision, I've always said this, the higher the vision, the less discipline you need to be successful. The higher the vision, the less discipline. The lower the vision, the higher the discipline you need. You got to force yourself to get it done, right? It's a have to versus a want to. When the vision is high, it's a want to, and then you do it naturally, free-flowingly, unconsciously, right? When you want to do it because it's something that inspires you. Find that vision for yourself, why you're building the business you're building, why you're living the life that you're living, and I'll tell you what, you will find that doing those hard tasks will become a lot easier the higher the vision is. All right, number eight, get sufficient sleep to recharge your batteries. Don't live and perform on fumes. Get the rest that you need. Eat healthy, take care of your body. Right? Do the things that keep that immune system strong. Exercise, but make sure you definitely get enough rest every night the best you can. And then number nine, create a success team. In your business, I'm sure a lot of you have a success team. You have your weekly meetings. You, you, you're, you're associating with each other on a regular basis. That is vital. In my business, I'll tell you what, the years that I've done... Um, quantifiably better financially versus other years are those where I had a team around me. Unfortunately, I have a team around me today. And that makes a huge difference when you have a team. So get partners to work with, get people that share your vision. Again, you're not going to share your goals with everybody. You're going to share with your goals with people that, um, that you trust um, that somewhat have a vision of what you're trying to do, someone of a like mindset, that will help, right? If you just share your goals with naysayers and dream killers, that's not going to help you, okay? So get away from those people, share your goals with people that will support you. Better yet, get associate with people that will press you a little bit, but that want to see you succeed. And, there, and allow them to give you real feedback. And don't take... Don't become defensive when they give you real feedback, okay? Be okay with the feedback. Um, let's see. Yeah, success team. What? How much time do we have? Okay, I got a couple minutes. Sweet. And then, I don't know, Steve, do you open this up for uh, any questions or anything or question and answer? I do. I mean, we certainly could. I mean, we uh, we we got plenty of time. We got another eight or eight or eight or Okay, minutes. I'll just share. I'll, I'll just share a couple. I'll just share. Okay, I'll just share, uh, share a couple more thoughts with you. And then if you have any questions, um, and these are just fun thoughts, uh, you can ask. Here we go. Two stories. All right. You ready? Dave Kimes. We have the Olympics coming up in Tokyo. Dave Kimes, Olympic rifle marksman, tried for the Olympics in 1960, but didn't make it beyond the qualifying rounds. He tried again in 1964 and finished 10th. Again in 1968 and in 1972, he failed to qualify. In 1976, it took close inspection of several judges with magnifying glasses to drop Kimes 
from second place to fifth place. Again, he didn't make the Olympic team. Finally, in 1980, at the age of 39, Dave made the Olympic team. And that was the year, the first time in history that the United States didn't compete in the Olympics. Whew. You think your life is tough. Here's the challenge right now. We live in a victimized world. Don't buy into it. Don't buy into the victim that something's not possible. Remember, I was that guy that didn't read my book till I was a junior in high school because I couldn't read. Steve had read all the books, he read all of them. He read all the Hardy Boys, all the Nancy Drew. I tried and I realized I couldn't read. And so I didn't, I gave up. I said, I'm not a reader. You're either born with it or you're not. So I'm not even gonna try. Unlike Dave Kimes, I gave up. And it wasn't until I picked up that tape from Jim Rohn who said all leaders are readers that at 15 years old, I decided I'm gonna read my first book. And I did. And to think that today, I sit here with you today and I've written several books. I tell you, I know what persistence is about, but I will tell you what comes before persistence what comes before success is not expecting others to hand you anything, number one. And number two is not to become a victim. I don't know if I can express that any clearer. We live in a world that is increasingly has the tone of victim and that people owe you something. No, 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 no. That's only a short term maybe benefit to a small group. Um, I've spent tw over 20 years teaching people, no matter their circumstances, it's the first chapter of If You Think You Can, no matter your circumstances, you can rise above your circumstances, no matter the age, no matter the circumstances. And I can go down the list and I can share hundreds of stories with you of people that came from very little, difficult times who made it. And you can do the same thing. Never, never lose faith in that. All right. That's the first story. And then the second story is master your thinking, or at least manage it. During the Masters Golf Tournament many years ago, golfer Mac McClinlan had been playing poorly. Quote, honey, I'm playing so badly, I'm afraid I might hit somebody. McKellen said to his wife prior to the start of the second round, his tee shot on the first hole hit his wife and knocked her unconscious. <laughs> wow, how's that for predicting behavior? Remember this, words trigger images which trigger performance and words predict and perpetuate performance. Raise the quality of your language. Raise the quality of your internal thinking. That's vital. Rise above the low frequency to the success frequency, which has a higher frequency, frankly. Don't just be careful what you buy into and what words you repeat over and over, because whatever you repeat over and over and over, you lay a seed and eventually your external world harmonizes with those words, with that energy, with that field of success, if you were, or lack thereof. So make sure the words you're using, if you see yourself being critical of others, if you find yourself saying negative things, catch yourself and say, no, stop. What I mean is, and then restate it a better way. Get in the habit of correcting yourself. I remember when I was, I don't know, 18 years ago, somewhere in that time frame, I found myself getting really upset when I would go to a store and I would go to pay for, let's say, a shirt. And the, the person behind the counter would say, hey, can I see your ID? Because I would hand them my credit card or whatever. And they'd say, can you show me your ID? And I remember internally, I would get so upset. Like, why would you question me? Why would you question me? I, I am say I am who I, who I am that I say. And I find that went on for maybe a year or two. And finally, one day I was teaching a seminar and I thought, wait a minute. Listen to me very carefully, but don't watch me too close. I had to apply these same principles to myself. So the next time I went to the store, I can remember exactly where I was. As I sit here right now, I sat in the parking lot. I closed my eyes. I imagined myself 
going in the store, buying the shirt that I was hoping to find and buy. And I imagined this while I was sitting in the car. And I played the image of the person behind the cashier desk asking me for my ID. And I played the movie of myself, not as I used to be. I played the movie of myself taking out my ID and giving it to them with a smile on my face and saying, thank you for checking my ID. I recognize that you are trying to protect me. And from that day, I went in to the store. I acted out that story in my head. And for 18 years now, I've never had that issue. It's about waking up. Wake up, recognize what's serving you in the long term and say, wait, I'm going to try a different vehicle going forward. All right. Listen, I hope you felt my heart. I know you probably feel a little bit of my enthusiasm, but hopefully you got something out of this today that you can take and use in the future. I threw a lot at you. Thanks for being good listeners. And by the way, just a little selfishly, go check out the Unleash Your Greatness Within podcast. It's my podcast on iTunes or Spotify or whatever. Go check it out. I interview all kinds of high achievers. In fact, the next one I'm going to interview is a person who believes, a scientist and an author who believes with the technology we have today that we can live to 200 years old. That book is coming out in a month and they want me to interview this guy. Hmm. I wonder what kind of questions I'm going to ask this person. Ooh, that's going to be fun. All right. That's my message, Steve. All right. Thank you for all for being a part of it and listening to me. Oh, that was awesome, man. Brother, I appreciate you, man. Every time thank you. I listen, and, and I talk to you all the time, so it's always, thank like, you. But I'm over here taking notes. I'm typing it down. I'm like, okay, man, own your mornings. That's a good one. And you already know that's something that I really believe in strongly. Anyways, that one principle alone, but I got some other ones there, but I'm going to first go out to Ryan. Uh, he's one of our ring earners in the company. And Ryan, do you have anything you want to say? Any Anything you want to throw at TJ before we wrap up the call? Of course. Good to see you, sir. You too. Really appreciate you too. It. Yeah. And, and uh, just for me, I've seen Mr. Hoisington, uh, I don't know, a dozen times speak and teach. And uh, Steve and I were, were we, we attended a training with Tony Robbins and they talked about the power of proximity. Mm -hmm. And I just want to think about this and just share with you guys. Steve and Brendan and myself, we try to bring the best speakers on our weekly call. But just imagine. Uh, I don't know if you wrote the check or you run your credit card, but you didn't pay anything. Companies across the country and the world pay Mr. Hoisington to, to speak at their events. Now think about this. He's been paid hundreds of thousands, including a million dollars to be a representative to teach personnel. We get him for free, ladies and gentlemen. This is phenomenal, number one. Steve, <laughs> thank you for your power of proximity, right? Who you hang around. It is phenomenal. I absolutely love it. Secondly, uh, when he talked about fear, you know, because we have so many brand new people and the first thing they do is sign up. The second thing they do is back off because they're scared. And what you said was um, do the thing that scares you the most and it'll dissipate. Right. Chunk so it down first, chunk it, it, chunk it down right. first, and then trust the, de the delay between taking action and achieving the result. There's always a delay, but you got to hold fast to that, tr that trust when you don't see results. Okay. Sorry to interrupt so, you. So important that our new people understand that it is such a viable principle. Everybody wants to be as good as Steve Hoisington. And it's like, okay, he probably wasn't that great on his first day. He just took action. And now right. he's phenomenal, but he can answer every question. He can do it all. But I just absolutely love that, that you taught that principle first. So I appreciate you, sir. Love you very much. Good to see you. And my wife, she was listening in the car. She said, oh, my gosh, that is absolutely still one of my favorite books, this, the Family Robinson book. Oh, that's uh, right. She just loved it. Absolutely oh, loved it. That's she, nice. She raves about it. So. Good no, day, awesome. Sir. Can I just say something about proximity? There's also proximity of revelation. So take, let me take you down the channel of Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. It is true what you just said, that uh, proximity is key. And the, when you get around the right people and you fill your mind with the right books and you fill your mind with the right content, um, it's amazing what will flow into your life. And you'll see more revelation. What I mean by revelation is there's that part of all of us, intuition, that speaks to us when we're quiet and when we're still. 
and sometimes it comes to you at one o'clock in the morning. Sometimes it comes up when you wake up extra early in the morning. I don't know. It comes at different times when I'm on a run, for example. Listen to that voice and follow that voice. Okay. I could, I could go on and on. Anyway, sorry. That's great. <laughs> All right. I am going to open it up real quick. TJ, if you're okay, just see if anyone else has any other. Oh, advice. yeah. Oh, I'm before. here. Let's do it. I'm selfishly taking a little extra of your time because I know. I just know how rare we get you on. Listen, today. listen, I don't do what I do, Steve. You know this. I don't do this. Do, it's not a have to to me. And so no. I love people, number one. I love all people. Just treat me okay, would you please? Right? <laughs> Behavior goes a long way. Um, and it's being around kind people that want to be kind back. Hey, let, we're all on the same planet together. Let's get along. But I will tell you, I do this because I love it. I love it. So bring it to me. Bring it to me. Yeah. So does anyone, we're going to maybe open up from like maybe two or three at the most, but does anyone have any questions for TJ? Anything you'd like to throw at him? Anything you'd like, hey, I'd love to have an insight on that. Anyone have anything you want to throw at TJ while we got him? Well, hey, this this is Ken. I just, uh, not a specific question, uh, a how-to, but uh, TJ, God, it's so good to hear your voice. (laughs) Uh, It's good to see you. I got to put on those audio books again, but uh, tell me exactly how we get to your podcast. I'm, I'm not real familiar with that technology. So how do, how do I, how do I go about doing that? No, that's a great question. It's really simple. So if you, I would say, um, if you just download, if you have the app on your phone, let's just say, assuming you have a smartphone and you click on the, the Apple podcasts or it's Google play, I think on Android, all you do is go into the search button, search it box and just type in my name, TJ Hoisington and the Unleash Your Greatness Within podcast will pop up and boom, you can subscribe to it. And if you wouldn't mind, hey, this is a please, please. If you wouldn't mind leaving a little review, if you like something, hey, leave a review. Actually type one sentence out or just say two words. Love it. That's good. You know, something simple. And we can listen to previous ones. That oh, yeah. Can- There's a couple hundred in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got two questions here real quick. I'm going to go to Sandra first, and then I've got one in the chat from Anthony. So, Sandra, go ahead. I just wanted Hello. to send him a big old smile. Yeah, I you know it. Let me throw you a smile. Yeah. I miss you so much. You too. I can't wait to see You're you in person again. Oh, for sure. Amazing training. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, girl. Yeah. I love you, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think the last time a lot of us saw TJ was like, Right before COVID, our last huge big event we had down in, in Washington, we had a big super regional, and TJ was one of our guest totally. speakers. Like two weeks later. I love we it. Up, yeah. <laughs> you guys are like fam. Some of you are new, but for some of you that are new, I started with Legal Shield back when Steve did. And um, I had my dream that I had been dreaming with, and I went and worked with Tony Robbins. So that was a whole part of my storyline. But since then, because of Harlan Stonecipher, who's the founder of the company, he it was because of him that I, my business took off overnight when he asked me to speak at the national convention and make, if you think you can, available to all associates around the world. And um, I just will be eternally, literally, eternally grateful for Mr. Stonecipher that didn't know me from Adam and just read the book and called me up one day. It was a surprise to me and said, I've got you outnumbered four to one. He was in a conference room where he said, I've got this person, this person, and this person in the room. And we have a couple things to talk about. I said, oh, hello everybody, how are you doing? And he said, TJ, I'd like to give you two A pluses. He says, number one, I, I wanna give you an A plus on your book. This is before he invited me to speak or anything. This is the first time I ever talked to him. I had sent him a a, a copy in a three ring binder of my book. And I said, well, thank you, sir. That's really great. And he says, I want to give you a second A plus on persistence. I said, excuse me. He said, persistence. He goes, Bruce Redwine, who's my assistant, told me how many times you called to check up on me to see if I was reading your book in that three ring binder. And you called like 80 times in one month. I talk about persistence. I tell you what, my wife said, go out and call again. So anyway, and then he said, will you speak at my national convention in two, two months? And I thought, absolutely. Here I am living in the basement of my parents' house. 
Um, I had a car repossessed. I was, I was, I, my back was literally against the wall. He said, will you speak at the national convention and will you have books available? 15,000 books available at the conference. I said, absolutely. Are you kidding me? Of course I'll be there. He said, okay, great. We'll see you there in two months. I said, oh, awesome. I'll see you there. I hung up the phone. My hands were sweaty as sweat palms can be. And I called Steve and I said, Steve, I don't have any money, but Harlan Stonecipher said, if I have the books printed, I can have 15,000 down at the national convention in two months. Can I borrow the money? And Steve lent me the money and I paid him back, but Steve lent me the money so that I could make 15,000 original 15,000 copies of If You Think You Can. And that weekend, all 15,000 were sold and the rest is history. So I will forever be thankful for Harlan Stone Cipher for whatever reason he trusted me. I don't know why. But if you want to be trusted, be trustworthy. And for some reason, he trusted me. Okay, you have someone else that had a... Had a I did, thank you. And Anthony wrote in the chat, what's the best oh. way to reset from a low kernel thinking, low, think, low level thinking? Love <laughs> it. Low yeah, yeah. Low level thing. How do you change? How do you reset from low level thinking? Maybe on a day, or even an air, or maybe a time frame in your life. Well, yeah, time is not an issue. Listen, some of the oldest people I know have gone out later in life and created businesses. We can go through history and find people like that. Some of the young people we do, we see the same thing and vice versa, it doesn't matter. So what? what is something really simple you can do? It's no different than updating your phone every three months. You got to update your thinking. So how do you update your thinking? You got to pause in life, turn off the TV, turn off the radio and read. And if you don't read, if you don't read, you get rickets of the mind. So that's number one, Jim Rohn would always say. But here's the other thing. We have Audible today. We have ways to listen to stuff, trainings like this, go back to pre. And what you want to do is start filling your mind with can-do messages with, a, a, here we go, abundance mindset messages, not scarcity mindset. Scarcity mindset means if there's a pie, then everybody gets a slice of a pie and that all the resources are limited. That's a scarcity mindset. An abundance mindset, mindset says, hey, there's enough opportunity and resources for everybody if you're willing to have confidence and go ask for it. Have confidence and put your stuff put your stuff forward and eventually the feelings of confidence will come and you'll just continue that momentum. But the key starts with what are you filling your mind with? You can give yourself vitamin D, vitamin zinc, vitamin C, all in words if you'll just start filling your mind with this kind of content until it becomes natural thinking for you. All right. That's great. Well, guys, this was awesome. Oh, TJ. You, you Come on, were, there's one more. There's one more. Give me one more. There's got to be one more. Do we have one more question for One TJ? more. Here we go. Anyone got something for him? What became of the guy that put, didn't go to the Olympics? Wait, say the beginning of that again. I didn't catch all that. The guy, who, the guy who tried to get into the Olympics... After 1980, what became of him? I, You know what? I never followed up. His name is Dave Kimes, K-I-M-E-S. I don't know. I don't know. Did he become a victim? I don't think so. What else did he end up doing? He had to pivot. And for many of you, because of COVID, this is a time of pivoting. So use the opportunity to pivot. Yeah. Love it. Good question, Dave. Yeah. All right. Well, now we're all going to race over to Wikipedia and find out whatever happened to Dave Guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. That was a great story. All right. Any, anyone else have anything you want to throw at TJ before we wrap up the call? It's so good to see everyone. We got Hawaii on the line. We got oh, Illinois yeah. here with the, one of our new associates, Nick. We got people all over the country. Anyone else have something? TJ. Thank we, you. We love you. We love you. Keep smiling. When you see someone out, when you see someone else without a smile, right, Sandra? Give them yours. All right. <laughs> hey, that was awesome, team. Let's go out there and rock and roll. This is a great week. You, can, you and I take these principles, apply them. We will be posting this on our team website tomorrow. I think TJ is going to 
uh, have a version of this as well available. So we'll go ahead and post that for everybody to share with your team. Because some people weren't able to get online. And so with that, thank you, TJ. Again, you be, you betcha. Brother. Thank you all. You know. Hey there. What'd you think? I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. You know, it's my pleasure to share these insights and distinctions that will lead to more happiness, fulfillment, and achievement in life. So, hey, if you like the message, if you like the podcast episode, hey, do me a favor. Would you give me a thumbs up? Would you give me a star rating? I'd really appreciate it. Better yet, if you wouldn't mind writing a little review wherever you're listening to this from, that would be really great. I'd appreciate it. All right, now go out there and unleash your greatness within. Greatnesswithin.com.